Hey, I'm Beth, and today I'm going to be asking a few questions to Andrea, and it's about CPC, which I actually have no idea what that even means. So I'm hoping Andrea is going to be able to help us with that one. Hey, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. How nice can to I help? meet you. Thanks so much for chatting. No today. worries. So a few of our followers online, they've been asking about CPC, and I actually don't even know what that okay. means. Could you explain that to start with? Yeah, so there's a couple of different options really. You have um, what's known as the initial CPC and then the driver CPC. So the initial CPC is for somebody who's just entering the industry. Um, and in order to get that, you need to go to a DVSA approved centre. Um, and there's four modules that you need to complete, which includes like a theory and a practical module. Um, once you've completed that as a new driver to the industry, you're given what's called a driver qualification card, which is a blue card, uh, which has an expiry date on, which should be five years from the date that you've completed your initial modules. If you're an existing driver, you need to create, um, complete 35 hours of training. So traditionally that's done in five, seven hour modules um, to be done over the course of a five year period. And the idea is to continually refresh drivers' knowledge within the industry. So a lot of drivers will have been doing this for a long time. Sure. Um, so things like driver's hours, it can be very beneficial to refresh a driver's knowledge. Mm. Um, so it's all about continual professional development and ensuring that drivers continue to maintain their knowledge, oh, legislation okay. changes, law changes, things sure. like that, making sure they're kept up to speed with it all. Yeah, so it's just like as things, it's like um, an, almost an update on your licence then, making sure you Essentially, know Essentially, yeah. I mean, uh, it's for example, with the training that we offer here at David Watson, um, we do our lorry loader and our slinger signaler courses, for example, are accredited with CPC hours. Um, so you have to go to an approved training centre to do your training, um, which is through an accrediting body called JORPT. Um, so we are a JORPT approved training centre, which means we're allowed to deliver the driver CPC training. Um, and uh, yeah, so it has to be completed within five years and every five years you'll get that new blue driver qualification card once you've done those 35 hours. Okay. The idea is that they're trying to put an emphasis on mixing the training up to make sure that you cover a range of subjects so that you're not just doing five driver's hours courses repeatedly. They want you to try and make sure you're covering a range of subjects. Again, to enhance and improve your knowledge, to make the industry more professional and to make sure everybody's as safe as they can be on the roads. Yeah, sure. I guess that's one thing that's so important, isn't it? It's the safety of like everyone around. Yeah, these are big vehicles, so we need to make sure that the people driving them are competent and capable of doing so. And yeah. by getting them in a the classroom environment, uh, we can refresh their knowledge um, and make sure that they're you know, aware of all the legislation, any safety information that they need to have. For example, one of the courses we have to put our drivers through for our FORS accreditation is a safe urban driving training course. Uh, which basically gives them uh, an idea of what it's like to be a vulnerable road user. So they will have half a day as theory and half a day where they're actually out on a bike. Oh, wow. uh, so they get to put their Lycra on uh, <laughs> and um, they get to see what it's like being a vulnerable road user on the road amongst things like HGVs, vans, sure. other vehicles. Um, so there's a lot of interest in um, and very relevant courses out there. So I think as long as, as long as drivers or potential drivers sort of do their research, there's a lot of interesting courses that are available. Yeah, because I guess it's sometimes it's putting yourself in that position to fully understand it from both aspects, isn't it? Yeah, um, the, the, the cycle training is, a, is definitely an interesting one. As I say, all of our drivers will do that once within a five year period as part of our FORS accreditation. Um, and as much as they have a laugh and a joke, it does definitely uh, in, improve and enhance that relationship between drivers and cyclists which traditionally is a little bit yeah. prickly <laughs> um, but yeah I mean we also have like carriage of dangerous goods so drivers that want to transport dangerous goods they can get CPC hours doing that course through us as well so there's lots of different options and it may depend on the type of driving industry you're going into as to what courses you need to do but yeah there's a whole range of courses available out there yeah that's really great actually recently i was just running the other day and these huge tractors and lorries came past me and i felt like 
a bit on edge mm -hmm. like oh my gosh you know yeah. I'm, I'm quite sure yeah. I'm not exactly the tallest person but it was quite surprising mm -hmm. for it to be that close yeah. and when they're traveling at speed it yeah. was like a bit scary yeah it can be it can be so increasing that awareness as I say professionalism within the industry is really important and it would be nice for the general public to appreciate that we do actually do these things for our drivers as well yeah. you know they don't just get behind the wheel and drive there's a lot else that goes on behind the scenes that as well. That is really good. So it's every five years that has to be topped up? Within five years they have to have done the 35 hours so as I say they try and encourage you to do one seven hour module per year okay. um, and then you've got your 35. There are other options available so there are half day modules available um, but generally, the courses we put our drivers through will be the seven hours or, or one day courses that we offer. Sure. And then, so how does that vary? I believe the question was, um, Matt, you may have to remind me my memory. There's the difference between CPC training as someone who's training who doesn't have a license okay. and CPC for a person who does have a license. Sure. So that's the initial CPC that I mentioned at the beginning where you do the four modules and that's through a DVSA approved test centre. Okay. So once they've got that qualification card, they will then need to complete 35 hours within a five year period once right. they've got that card. Mm -hmm. So the card is what they get when they complete the initial modules, which there are four of. Once they've got that card, then it's the 35 hours every five years from then onwards. I see. Okay. So once you've got the initial thing, it's yep. just then like the top up. Yep. And Okay, great. Is there anything else you, you want to add to that for someone that doesn't know uh, anything about it that would um, be important? I'd always say do your research. So research the quality of any training provider that you're going to go to. Have a look at the range of courses that they offer. Yeah. Um, is there an online e-learning module? Is it a remote course? Because obviously with COVID we had to develop the way we delivered our training. Um, so a lot of courses have moved online now. Sure. Uh, a lot of the courses we deliver actually have a practical element, so we don't have that option. Okay. Um, but research, you know, go on courses that are relevant to what you're doing in your specific driving industry. Yeah. Phone training providers and have a conversation if you're not really sure. Yeah. Look for employers that will put you through your CPC training so you don't sure. have to fund it yourself. Well, yeah, would it be expensive if you were to do that yourself? That completely depends on the course. And um, most most courses for a CPC within for a one day course could range anything from sort of fifty to two hundred pounds, but it oh, really right. depends if you get a qualification alongside of it. So the lorry loader course, you get a nationally recognised accreditation as well as your seven hour CPC. Sure. Whereas some of them, you'll get the certificate, so they will be less costly. So mm -hmm. as I say, really research what's relevant to your industry. Yeah. Um, and, and don't be afraid to pick up the phone and ask questions if, if you're not sure, really. Yeah, definitely. The gov.uk website has got a lot of information, so I'd recommend that as a first stop. Okay, cool. Well, thanks so much for the information. Yeah. I must be blabbing on because I've just had the call to say be quiet. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for all the information. I hope that's answered your questions. If there is anything else you'd like to know, feel free to drop a comment in uh, the comment section below and we'll be sure to get back to you.